Furman, Tyler, congratulations. You boys have made it into the final round of this competition. Now we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate this iconic weapon. The U.S. Army officer sword. Oh, the saber. Gentlemen, you'll have four days at your home forges in which to complete this challenge. At the end of those four days, you'll return and present your sabers to our panel of expert judges. And after they've thoroughly tested them, they'll move one of you forward to our Battle of the Branches final to represent the Army. Good luck, Bladesmiths. We'll see you in four days. Thanks. Good luck, bro. Good luck. It's day one. I'm back in my home forge in Wyoiga, Wisconsin. So my plan is going to be to start out with a nice 25 plus layer billet of Damascus. I've got my stack of 1084 right here. Then I've got my stack of 15 and 20 here. Ready to rock and roll and get this into the forge. I made a log splitter press. So that's giving me 22 tons of squish squish. probably cut this into about four bars, which will put us at uh, 108 layers restacked. Then we'll get them over to the welder. We're so hot in there, it's like looking at the sun. Day one's coming to a close. I'm just getting that last bit of length out of my billet, kind of looking like a saber. One, two, three. Oh, we got a quench tank. I'm hoping the quench goes well. That way, I can move on to the guard. <laughs> I get that blade into the oil. No pings. That's a good sign. That's a very good sign. When I pull the blade out of the quench, the blade actually straightened out instead of taking a curve. So now, I'm under the perimeters. I put my blade back in the heat. I bring it out. I put it on the jig that I made. I don't want to over pull it because I don't want to break it. I made it. Stay two here on my home forge. It's time to quench. I'm really crossing my fingers here that everything is going to go as planned. Because <laughs> I don't want to have to start over. Temperature feels good. Got a real, real slight warp in the end. I think that's something I can grind out. The file skates. Today's the last day. I'm starting day four. I'm concentrating on sharpening that blade and getting that handle done. I'm going to go with Purple Heart, one of the highest honors that you can receive while being in war and surviving. So now, a little bit of epoxy. We are successful on this one. It's day four here at my home forge. Uh, plan for today is to uh, finish shaping my handle, get everything polished up, put together, and finishing up a blade that I'm happy with. I rounded off a piece of wood to help me develop that curve in the guard. That's a good start. We're going to bring out that Damascus. The most rewarding part about making Damascus is going into the acid. I'm just. 110% pleased with it. The contrast is great. The pattern is awesome. I can't wait to see this blade tested by the judges. Hopefully, I can hear it will kill. Furman, Tyler, welcome back to the forge. You soldiers have had four days at your home forges to work on your Army officer sabers. Now it's time for our weapons test, a strength test, a sharpness test, and a kill test. <laughs> <laughs> All right, soldiers, your weapons look beautiful, but were they born to kill? To find that out, I'm going to take your weapons and deliver slashes and thrust on this ballistics dummy. Tyler, you're up first. You ready for this? Ready as I'll ever be. You need those teeth. 
alas, poor Yurik, I knew him well. <laughs> <sighs> All right, Tyler, this edge is sharp. I mean, just pulling out of that. Look how deeply it cut this ballistics dummy. Now, in cutting the spine and the jaw, it took a little bit of glinting, but no major chips, stayed straight, and most of all, it will kill. Thank you. <laughs> Fermin, are you ready? Sir, yes, sir. As soon as I see the bend on my blade, my heart stops. All right, Tremin, your edge will lacerate and cut flesh. Your tip is sharp to puncture from the back, even into the heart, and it lacerates on the way out. But in cutting the head and cutting that spine, it did take a bend, and there's light chipping on the edge of your blade. But your weapon, sir, will kill. Yeah. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test. To test the strength of your blade and the overall construction of your sabers, I'm going to beat them violently into these helmets like they were being worn by my mortal enemy. Now, I'm not really concerned about what your saber does to the helmets or the dummy. I want to see what the helmet and dummy are going to do to your sabers. Now, Furman, we're going to let your blood pressure cool down a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Tyler, you're going to go first. You ready? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler is a beast. You got some chipping on the edge, or I can catch my nail on. I don't see any pulls or delaminations in your steel. It's still in one piece. It's still sharp. Good job. Thank you. Awesome, dude. OK, Furman, how you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Well, we're going to do it anyway. Okay. <laughs> All right, Furman, we got two problems. One, your blade is just continuing to bend. Uh, pretty soon, it's going to be a 90 degree angle. Uh, the other thing is your handle grooves are shoving my hand right up against the guard, and it's just bashing my knuckles up into it. You can see my back two knuckles are already starting to turn blue and swell. That's a really big problem for me. Gentlemen, these tests are intentionally brutal and severe to set your blades apart from one another. Furman, we had a catastrophic failure in the middle of our strength test, and we just cannot continue testing with that bent blade. And I have to dismiss you from the forge. Thank you so much. Thank you. I gave it my best. Thank you, sir. I totally agree with shutting the test down. I wouldn't want to test it myself and be injured. Represent us well. I will, brother. All right, man. Tyler, coming up against you was an honor. I might not be the Fortune Fire champion. However, making it this far, it's been an amazing trip. I would love to do it all over again. Go Army. Tyler, congratulations. You've earned the Army's anvil in our Battle of the Branches final competition, where you'll have a chance to win the title of Forged and Fire champion for the Army and a check for $50,000. Good job, brother. Thank you. Feels amazing, but this is just the first step. I still got to go up against the Navy, the Marines, and the Air Force to prove that the Army can take it all. I'm Tyler Hackbar. I'm the Army champion, and I'm coming for you guys. Mike, Matt, congratulations. You've made it to the next phase in this operation, which means we're sending you back to your home for just to recreate this iconic weapon. 
the United States Air Force non-commissioned officer sword. You'll have four days at your home forges in which to complete this challenge. At the end of four days, you'll return and present your swords to our panel of expert judges. And after they've put them through the paces, they'll move one of you on to our final Battle of the Branches competition. You also need to make a scabbard for this sword. Oh, man. I'm just messing with you. Good luck, Bladesmiths. We'll see you in four days. <laughs> Good luck, brother. It's day one. It feels great to be back here in my home forge. For this blade, I'm going to be using Damascus, and I'm going to try to put in a twist just for fun. A lot of Air Force ties in how I live my life day to day, and this challenge was no exception. There's a lot of firsts for me on this blade. I've never done Damascus this long. I've never heat treated anything this long. I've never made a cross guard like this before. It's going to be a bit stressful for me. None of my welds pop, so at least it's a solid billet. So we won't know for sure until we're grinding into it, but I'm fairly certain it was a successful twist. I don't think we have any inclusions. I think it's gonna look pretty good. So I've got 16 layers now in this billet. I've got it drawn out enough, I can cut it into three sections, stack it back on itself for a total of 48 layers. This is gonna be one of the longest things I've ever forged. So keeping it straight might be a little bit of a challenge, especially with the twist in it. That could cause some things to warp. All in all, a solid finish for day one. Now that I'm one of two airmen left, I definitely want to be, you know, the one that shows that the Air Force has what it takes to uh, win the Forge and Fire Branch competition. The plan for today is to draw the 1084 round stock out. I'm just going to draw a line on the floor to give me an idea of how far I'm drawing it out. To start, the 1084 steel was uh, 20 inches. I got to draw it out to about 35 inches uh, to get the cross guard, the handle, and the pommel on. I still got to draw it out quite a bit. It down. This uh, 27 to 28 inch uh, sword is going to be interesting, keeping it straight. It is a negative 18 outside right now, so I'm ready to get inside and uh, turn this forge on. So yesterday I got the blade drawn out. This morning we're going for the flinch. Getting something this long, hot, uh, and keeping it straight is uh, going to be one of my biggest challenges right now. Now I got a warping issue. Might be heat treating it again. In the back of your mind, you're always thinking, did the heat treat not go well? Quenching two times, will I have, you know, bad grain structure? I have a ton of concerns. Slight warp, but at this point, I'm definitely not quenching again. It's the morning of day four. I didn't sleep very well. I still need to finish the pommel. I need to finish the cross guard, and I haven't even started the handle yet. I can tell we're almost through, though. Almost there. I can feel it. I definitely think this is a blade worthy of having me stand at the Air Force Anvil in the final round. It is an example of how I problem solve, how I look for solutions, and how I don't give up. All right, that's as good as we're going to get. Day four, and today I need to get the cross guard fitted up, the handle shape wrapped with wire, and then the, the pommel assembled as well. Holy handle. Looking at the original NCO sword, I was trying to figure out what the best way to make that wire wrapped handle was. Safety wire. We use that in the military. I thought that was good to kind of throw a little Air Force-ism into it. It works perfect. I'm definitely nervous that I have only one day left. In the back of your mind, you're always thinking, do I have what it takes to move on to the Battle of the Branches? I mean, that's what it's all about. That's it. May the best airmen win. All right, airmen. Now we'll take your weapon and deliver some thrust and slashes on this ballistic dummy. Mike, you're up first. You ready? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right, Mike, <laughs> it's a very light sword. Because of that, you can move with it. Now, your tip allows for a nice thrust with your edge. It slices, I can feel every cut in there. But more importantly, it will kill. Thank you. All right, Matt, your turn. You ready, sir? Yes, sir.
right, Matt, let's talk about your blade here. The edge that you have here is very sharp. The point punctures nicely, and most importantly, sir, it'll kill. Awesome, thank you. All right, next stop, the strength test. For that, we have Ben. Hello, Bladesmiths. To test the strength and durability of your swords, as well as their overall construction, I'll be bashing them into this propeller. Mike, you're up first. You ready? Uh, no. <laughs> We're going to do it anyway. All right. Well, Mike, your blade held up great. The only issue I have with it is that I would really like this pommel to be bigger. If the pommel were bigger, it would give me a stop. But it's got a nice weight. It's still sharp as when it started. Really well done. Thank you so much. Matt, you're up. What are you thinking? Ready. Matt, your blade held up great. It's still sharp. This is a, a much heavier sword, but the biggest issue I have is with the cross guard and back. Your cross guard is loose, it wiggles, and also your wire wrap is loose. But it's all in one piece. It did a heck of a thing on that propeller. Well done. Thank you. Well, we're not finished yet. Next up is the sharpness test, and for that, I give you to Doug. All right, Airmen. To test the edge of your blade, I'm going to be cutting across these harnesses. I'm looking for clean cuts. Mike, you're up first. You ready for this? Let's do it. Let's do this. All right, Mike, light in flight and sharp enough to cut through the harness. It will cut. Thanks, sir. Good job. Thanks, man. All right, Matt, your turn, sir. You ready? Yes, sir. Bam. All right, Matt, let's talk about your blade here. It's kind of heavy. It's so forward in its weight that on this slash, using the last six inches, it just scratched the back of the harness. But on the backhand swing, where it's going all the way through, it cut the harness. But your weapon, sir, it will cut. Thanks. Good job, man. Thanks. Mike, Matt, the bladesmith moving forward is. Mike, congratulations. Thank you. Matt, first of all, thank you for your service. You have a beautiful sword that did quite well but we based our decision on the fact that your guard came loose, the weight of your sword, and the wire wrapping is also loose. Well, that's the reason we're sending you home. Yes, sir. Matt, at this time, I have to ask you to please surrender your blade. I feel good, no matter what. I mean, I'm glad I made it here. Good job, thank you. I'm proud of myself, for sure. Mike's gonna represent the Air Force well. He's got a lot of people rooting for him, me as well, and he's a good bladesmith, so good luck. Mike, they said you're only as good as your competition, and you overcame a fantastic competitor to move forward in this competition to represent the entire branch of the Air Force at our Battle of the Branches competition. How do you feel? Feels amazing. Please present your blade to the judges. I can't believe I'm the Air Force champion. I'm looking forward to showing the rest of the DOD what we've got. There's a lot of added pressure moving forward. Now I'm competing against the Army, the Navy, and the Marine Corps, and we've got a little bit of a rivalry going on, so you better bring it, because you know I'm going to. Trip Gene, congratulations. You fellas have made it into the next evolution of this competition. Now we're sending you back to your home for just to recreate this.
Your final challenge is to forge a Marine Corps officer's sword, also known as a Mamelute. You'll have four days at your home forges in which to complete this challenge, and at the end of those four days, you'll return and present your swords to our panel of expert judges. And after they've thoroughly tested them, they'll move one of you forward to represent the Marine Corps at the Battle of the Branches final competition and give you that opportunity to win a check for 50 grand. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in four days. Rah, rah. Good luck. So it's day one. I'm back at my home forge in Springfield, Virginia. So I think the more difficult aspects of the build are the parameters that I have to build it to. It's very specific and very tight. So we'll see what happens. Because the parameters are so tight on the bend of the blade, my crazy idea is to take a six by six log, and then I'm going to remove all the excess wood, and it's going to leave me with a, the blade shape that I want. Wow, that went better than I thought. I plan on heating up the metal and whacking it on this log, and it's gonna bend and conform to it. I've seen a lot of the Smiths straighten out their blade with this slap on the anvil. So why not try to do it on a big old log and put an arch in it? It seemed to work pretty well. I like just jumped four hours ahead of my little schedule. I'm getting ready to heat treat it. I wanna keep it thick because I'm worried about a warp. Quenching. I am exhausted. The quench went great. I'm ready to hit the rack. All right, so it's day two. I'm getting ready to jump right into some forging. Hammer time. Well, this is a very thin, long blade. So what's difficult about a thin and long blade is just the pure fact that it's going to warp. I'm constantly having to hammer the big curves back out and try to keep it straight as possible, all while trying to draw it out and get the width and the thickness that I want. It finally meets parameters. I'm finally able to move on to quenching. If I was to pick up a crack, that's start over time. Man, this thing could do anything in the uh, quench here. If this thing snaps, we're going to be close to being screwed, man. I don't see any warps. It looks like it's pretty straight. Super stoked about that. After today, I feel pretty damn awesome. Day three, and I'm ready to get going on sand casting a guard for my Mameluke sword. I've never done any sand casting before. Go big or go home. The consistency of the sand is the big thing. I went with play box sand, mixed it with some kitty litter and some water, got it to the right consistency, and took a shot at it. I molded some clay in this rough shape of a guard, and I used that to mold the sand around. I pulled out the clay. Now I'm ready to heat up my brass. Let's go cast some metal. My mold is ready. My brass is a big pool of molten hot brass. I'm ready to pour it in, so I'm going to go for it. I'm really hoping this sand cast goes well, because I've used a lot of time. And if it doesn't, I don't know how I'm going to recover. Moment of truth coming up. Holy cow, it worked. I can't believe it. I just got to knock the sand off, clean it up a little bit on the grinder. That's a guard. We got a guard. <laughs> Day four, man. Today, I've got to sharpen this blade, get it out of here. My K-bar didn't do so well in the rope cutting test. So I want this blade to cut through whatever those guys are going to put this thing through. I want that Marine Corps anvil pretty damn bad, just because I want to be able to represent the Marines in the Battle of the Branches. I believe I can come home with that 50 grand and represent the Marine Corps very well. <laughs> so this is the start of day four. So today, I got to start out with getting it all fit together. When Doug Marcaito swings this thing, it is going to slice whatever it goes into. I realized I had a little bit more time left, and I wanted to try to put the names of my competitors on the blade with some gun blue. Rick, Garrett, Trip, and Gene. And I'm pretty happy with it. I know it's going to cut. I am done. All right, Marines, welcome to the kill test. To find out what lethal damage your weapon will do, I'll take your weapon, deliver killing blows to this ballistics dummy. Trip, you're up first. You ready for this? Get it, killer. Hoorah. Mm. 
Yikes. All right, Trip. First up, the handle construction. It is comfortable. Your edge here is sharp. Even cutting through the skull, no issues at all. No chipping, no glinting. And when you thrust with this, it penetrates and cuts all the way out. Overall, sir, your weapon will kill. All right, you're raw. All right, Gene, you're next. You ready? Let's do this. All right, Gene, your weapon picked up a warp right here, okay? Your handle, coupled with blood all over, made it very slippery and hard to hold on to because it's blocky and smooth. And I lost my grip on it. That's a very dangerous thing to happen when you're trying to wield the weapon. But your edge is still sharp, your tip is still thrustable, and more importantly, it will kill. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. So to test the overall construction of your blade and see if they're going to hold an edge, I'll be smashing into these pots. Now remember, this test is not about what your swords do to those pots. What those pots do to your swords. Trip, you're up. You ready? Ready. OK. Oh, my yep. Gosh. Holy moly. Well, Trip, a few things before we get to the obvious. Your handle construction is very comfortable. Felt really good in my hand. Felt like I could do a lot with it. But right there at the edge, there's that little brown spot. You got a micro crack on oh, that edge. Yeah. So as soon as I hit that pot, it cut loose. I loved it, feel its shape and its look, but obvious problem. All right, Tripp, while I know any Marine could take that blade and still continue to fight, in this competition, your blade suffered a catastrophic failure after one strike on that vase. Gene, your blade only has to survive one strike on these pots. The entire Marine Championship for Forged and Fire lies on one swing, and I've got a big old warp in my blade, so it's not over yet. Gene, first off, you're in one piece. You picked up that bend earlier on, but you didn't pick up any more in this test. Strong blade, held up. Good job. Thank you. All right, Trip. Looks like Gene's blade held up. That means that you cannot move forward to represent the Marine Corps in our next challenge. Please leave the forge. Super disappointed. There's really no way to tell that you have like any minor cracks or anything like that. So you just, hey. You find out when you test them. That's how we found out today. Get it, brother. Gene's going to freaking bring home that Battle of the Branches, Marine Corps anvil. He's winning it for the Marine Corps. Gene, congratulations. You've won this competition, and that means that you're going to be moving forward into our Battle of the Branches final competition to represent the Marine Corps at the Marine Corps anvil. And that's going to give you an opportunity to win a check for $50,000. Good job, brother. Thank you. Holy cow. I did not see this coming. It's been a fun ride up until now, but now I got to represent the Marines. So now it's it's game on, and it's about to get real. And those other branch service members better look out. Jared Lee, congratulations. You guys have made it into the next phase of this selection process. What you're fighting for is the Navy Anvil at the Battle of the Branches final competition and a chance to win $50,000.
And now we're sending you back to your home for just to recreate this military weapon from history. U.S. Naval Officer's Sword. Awesome. You'll have four days at your home forges in which to complete all these parameters. At the end of those four days, you'll return and present your blades to our panel of expert judges. After they've expertly tested them, they'll push one of you forward into the Battle of the Branches competition. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in four days. Today's day one, and today I'm working on forging out the basic shape of the sword and maybe get to heat treat. Navy way is uh, slow and smooth. Start slow, and it will turn into uh, speed and perfection later on. I got my sword shaped out, and I'm ready for uh, heat treat. Into day one, no cracks. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm sitting well right now. Yup, that is sexy. All right. First thing I'm going to do today is use my rotary tool and hand grind in my fuller. For a hand fuller, can't ask for much better. Blades ready to be quenched. The one thing you always think about is don't snap. This is the moment. Don't have a warp. Snaps are fatal. Warps are critical, but can be fixed. Pull it out. Uh-oh. It's hard, but it's got a bow. To the jig. I have to get it in my straightening jig to see if we can get that pulled out. Let's hope it straightened it. If not, we got to go through that whole thing again. Pick it up, look down it. Bam. We got a straight blade. 10 minutes, bladesmiths. You have 10 tiny minutes. <laughs> So as of right now, my plan is to get some sheet steel, use that for the majority of the leaf guard, and then getting some steel for the knuckle guard and braiding it, kind of give it a nautical naval theme to it. Try and make it look like some rope or line. This wire is bulking up way more than I thought it would be. I'm trying to braid this thing. It's not moving the way I want it to. Uh, I didn't want nearly as many gaps as this, so I'm starting to get a little frustrated. I still have a whole lot to do, but at the end of the day, I'm treating this as if this is a $50,000 sword. So I'm gonna put every ounce of energy I have into it. I decided I'm just gonna stick this in the vise and uh, start twisting until it looks like rope. All right. First things first, put the coffee down, pick the sword up. Tempered last night, and the warp that I thought I had fixed came back in the temper overnight right down the edge, right down that spine. I have to get this fixed before I move on with the sword. <sighs> to get this warp out, I'm gonna have to pin it, heat up the spine, then let it relax, and hopefully the warp will come out. A little tap, but I can live with that. It don't rock. Finally get this warp out. Still hard. It's time to move on to the handle material. I set up the micarta handles by cutting them rough shape to fit the handle. Drill the holes like that. I think I need to get the pommel. So when I do make the guard and knuckle bow, I know where to end it. So I need the pommel next. It's pretty blade heavy, and it's going to need a big chunk of brass to be able to balance that out. Done. <laughs> All right, sailors. Your weapons look beautiful, but it's time to find out if they're wall hangers or they're actually something you could use to kill. Jared, you're up first. You ready for this? I'm ready. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, Jared. The balance you have here feels good in the hand. Now, your edge is very sharp, as you can see. With every cut, it cuts deep for every thrust, all the way through and true. Overall, sir, your weapon will kill. Thank you. Good job. All right, Lee, it's your turn. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. That's a lot of hog to go through with a skinny blade. I'm pretty nervous.
All right, the, the handle construction is comfortable. Your edge, not one single glint or rolling. Your tip punctures and cuts on the way out. And overall, sir, it will kill. Yes. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test, the dreaded flex test. For the test, the strength of your blade, I'll be bending it in both directions up to that red point. Jared, you ready for this? I guess. OK. I'm impressed. Uh, your blade is just as straight as when we started the test. That's a really nice heat treat. Thank you. Holding your sword, you can shorten that handle just a little bit scale-wise, but at the same time, it winds up being fairly comfortable. Nicely done. Thanks. All right, Lee, you're up. You ready for this? Yes, sir. OK. The longest five seconds of my life. Nice job, Lee. That blade is still the same shape it started it. That's impressive. Thank you, sir. Really good. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the sharpness test. We call this the fish slice. We're going to be lowering those fish down. I'm just going to start cutting. I'm going to keep cutting until I run out of fish. All right, Jared, you're up first. Are you ready? I'm ready. OK. <laughs> this is why I love sabers. They are just so much fun to cut with. It's just passing right through the fish beautifully. Your handle construction might be a little bit wide, but it's comfortable and it stays in my hand. I think you did a great job. Thank you. Lee, you ready? Yes, sir. OK. All right, Lee, cuts beautifully. I mean, the edge on this is wonderful. Saber's definitely sharp and a great balance. Nicely done. Thanks, sir. Jared and I are neck and neck. I mean, both plays performed great. Jared Lee, only one of you can move forward, and that Smith is. Lee, congratulations. You'll be moving forward to represent the United States Navy in the Battle of the Branches final competition. Congratulations, good job. Thank you. Jared, unfortunately, your blade didn't make the cut, and David Baker's going to tell you why. Jared, you brought us an effective cutting sword, but if this came down to the basic details of aesthetics and the way that weapon felt in my hand. I understand. Well, Jared, come on forward, brother. Good job, man. This competition was such a learning experience for me. Uh, made a lot of good friends. I uh, had a great time. Give him hell. Good job, shipmate. I didn't win, but I did two a uh, very awesome sword. Lee, you did well. Give him hell and take it home from the Navy. Lee, congratulations. You forged your way into this final competition where you'll compete against the Air Force, Army, and Marine Corps to bring home the title of Forged and Fire Champion to the United States Navy. And you'll also be competing to receive a check for $50,000. You've done a fantastic job. You're only halfway there. And we'll see you real soon. Good job. Thank you, sir. I just won. Really? 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 Being able to represent the Navy is an honor. I am totally ready to do this all over again. And I'm going to tell you guys to bring your A game, because I'm bringing mine. Bladesmiths, congratulations. You fellas have made it into the final round of this competition. Now we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate this iconic weapon from history. 
General George Washington's lion-headed Cutto. Good luck, Bladesmiths. We'll see you in four days. So my bill is going to be made out of 1084 and 15 and 20. Really good contrasting steels for Damascus. The last time I did my saber build for the Army episode, I went with the Damascus. The Damascus, it is a risk because there's multiple things that could go wrong from cold shuts to stress fractures. But as long as my blade does perform as I expect it to, my Damascus is gonna be that thing that puts me over the top. Here we are again, back in uh, Springfield, Virginia at my home forge. Well, the plan for today is to cut out a billet for the sword. So this wood anvil, as I call it, or the log whap method, to put a gentle arc in the blade that's the same log that I used for the Mameluke sword for the Marine competition. It worked before. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Day two, I got to get this blade quenched today. And I'm going to make some changes to the way I do it in my forge. I'm going to try using the tube method. Main goal is to take this tube and just turn it into a nice, long, hot oven. Had a little bit of issues getting even heat last time. So I think with that tube, it should give me a nice, more even controlled heat. I don't hear any cracks, pings, or anything like that. I nailed it. It's exactly what I need it to be. Anyway, day four, finally here. I'm feeling ready. I have a plan, and I have some hurdles to get over. The biggest one roars is that lion head pommel. First thing this morning, I'm going to put that thing in plaster Paris and let it set. I wonder if I should do it with pewter. You don't have to get pewter nearly as hot. It'll be shiny and look just like silver. Looks like garbage. I think I'm going to go with the silver one just because of the look of the silver. Right now, I need to finish the lion head, polish everything and sharpen the blade, try to take some weight off anywhere that I possibly can, and then put it all together. Woo! It's done. It's done. Day four, final day. I've never carved a pommel before, so I don't know how long it's going to take, and I'm going to have to put some time into it. So I'm just profiling from one way right now the shape of the lion's head to kind of refine it to what my final shape is going to be. And then I start removing some more material, a little fine tuning with my rotary tool. Pretty much looks like a lion to me. All right, veterans, welcome to the keel test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your weapon and deliver killing blows to this big carcass. Tyler, so you're up first. Ready? <laughs> OK. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, Tyler, your handle construction, just right. Your edge is very sharp. Overall, sir, this saber will keel. Perfect. All right, Gene, your turn, sir. You ready? Let's do this, Doug. All right, Gene, this is a heavy sword, very forward heavy. But when you have a forward heavy blade that you're hitting and meets resistance, a cylindrical, almost circular handle makes it twist in my hand. So probably this is the reason why the chain came off. But your blade is sharp, it will heal. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, December 25th. 1776, George Washington leads the Continental Army across a frozen Delaware River to attack the Hessians at Trenton, New Jersey. And he probably didn't chip his way through the ice, but that's not going to keep us from our strength test, the ice block chop. 
Tyler, you're up first. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. All right, so Tyler, your chain fell off, but there's no damage on your edge. Your handle's comfortable other than the chain. You nailed it. Thanks. Good job. All right, Gene. Do it. <laughs> All right, Gene, your blade's edge is still there. And it's still short. The issue is uh, the rest of your chain fell off, and it's picked up a bend. I have less issue with that and more issue with this polished handle. It's just hard to hold on to. But it is strong, and it does have an edge. So good job. Hurrah. All right, veterans. Our sharpest test today is the Hessen Charge. This is all about what your edge will do to these dummies. Tyler, you're up first. You ready for this? Yep. All right, Tyler, the weight of your weapon does prevent me from going very fast, but you have a very sharp edge all the way through. Your weapon, sir, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Gene, it's your turn, sir. You ready? Let's do this, Doug. All right, Gene, to be able to maintain a good grip on this, more of the cuts I create are more impact as opposed to a slash where it cuts all the way through. So you have some cuts here that are more nicks, deep nicks, because you have a very sharp edge. And for this test, sir, your weapon will cut. Awesome. Tyler, Gene, first of all, I want to thank you both for your service. You're both champions in my mind. You've already won your branch divisions but there can only be one Battle of the Branches champion. And you'll walk out of here with a check for $50,000. And that champion is... Tyler, congratulations. You are the Battle of the Branches Forged and Fire champion. Gene, please surrender your blade. <laughs> there's a lot of Marines out there and there's a lot of great guys in the Marine Corps. And so for me to stand here and represent them is pretty humbling. I learned, too, that it's not about uh, just the metal being forged in fire. I feel like I've been forged in fire. And it's how you handle the ups and downs, the wins, the losses, and it'll determine real quick how you've been heat treated throughout your life. Tyler, congratulations. You overcame every obstacle set in front of you. You beat out all the other Smiths, and now you're the Battle of the Branches Forged and Fire champion. That's a title that comes with a check for 50 thousand dollars and most importantly bragging rights good job <laughs> my brother please present your blade to the judges i'm super excited when this whole thing started i had no idea how it was all going to turn out feels good to have represented the army the fact that i just won fifty thousand dollars is, is starting to set in <laughs> i'm sergeant tyler hackbarth and i'm the new battle of the branches champion